If you're writing your first UX design resume or iterating on your 10th resume, keep watching. Because in this video, I will cover six don'ts in your UX design resume. Use these as a checklist to make your existing content simpler, cleaner, and more relevant. A version that will increase your chance to get an interview with your dream company. Let's begin. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. If you missed the 10 do's UX resume video, it's all right, it's right here and in the description. Today, again, we're gonna focus on the content on your UX resume, but instead of do's, we're gonna cover the don'ts, six don'ts on your resume, or rather six mistakes to avoid when you're writing your UX design resume. Again, with today's informative session, you can upgrade your resume quality overnight by just checking against these six points and fixing them if needed. Ready for that free and fast upgrade? I'm so ready. Because see, I already have my favorite coffee in hand. Oh, so bold, so rich, so complex, but so clean. And yo, stop that crap. Let's go. Oh yes, let's dive right in. Just to reiterate, your resume should showcase what you did and the impact of what you did. These two things are the primary, primary, primary content, aka the king for resume, which a recruiter should be able to finish reading in six seconds. All right, so we have established that, and here are the six don'ts. Don't include everything. If everything is important, that means nothing is important. Even within a resume, there's still a hierarchy of importance of information. You watched the 13 reasons why on Netflix, I mean 13 things to include in a UX resume, right? If not, here you go. Look at all the content on your resume and think through each piece of information. For freshmen, it's okay to have more skills than projects because that might be all you have. For seniors, you probably have some internships already so you can drop some of your projects, skills, or interests. It can feel scary to leave out some content. I feel you because I was there. For my current resume, I dropped one internship and one freelance job. I'm glad that I dropped them because now it's more focused and relevant. If you're still hesitant, take Nike's advice. Just do it. Don't think. And that's my advice. If you have done it once, soon enough you will get used to it. Eventually you realize you made the right choice. Conclusion, keep the good ones, ignore the shitty ones. Don't decorate it. Don't decorate it yet. I would recommend Decorating it only and only under one condition. You have optimized your resume in all the ways you can, meaning you added as many relevant experiences as you could, you phrased your bullet points in the best way possible, keep everything fitting on one page, and do all those 10 do's covered in the other video. If you are decorating your resume without perfecting the content, you can really waste a lot of time. I know because I'm also a designer. We tend to have fun crafting, tinkering, all those different colors and shapes. In addition, without the core, the, the content, any decoration can only be a distraction. You are better off keeping it black and white in New Times Roman. If you finish the content, sure, you can add some touches to it. Repeat, I said touches. Not a full-on Victorian decoration session. This is not a Christmas tree dress up competition, okay? One accent color is fine, with another logo is borderline acceptable. Designing your resume is more about designing it in the right way, making it legible, making it readable. Most of the aesthetics actually come from the font choice and the composition of the content. Speaking of designing resumes, let me just save all that for another video. Don't put physical address. If you already know about this one, yes, it's a cliche. If you don't, this can definitely save you some room for your resume, some time for yourself answering the door, save that shocking yet confused face from the recruiter, and save them some time even noticing there is a physical address. Don't put your head shot. According to my German friends, having a picture, your profile picture, on your resume is a common practice, but that's more like a European thing. I cannot speak to that because I don't know anything about it. I can only speak to UX design resumes in the US, 
or maybe even a little bit for Canada. Googling resume design will show you profile pictures on resumes. Those are mainly inspirations for the color composition rather than the content. This is not Tinder for work. Isn't that LinkedIn? And you won't see this happen. Your expertise is what a company is looking for. If you're applying to companies in the US, save the time finding a nice picture of yourself. Instead, spend the time on adding relevant experiences to your resume, like how this video suggests. Don't put objective slash about. This used to be a thing, but it's not really needed in 2021. Thank the evolution of resumes, it just saves you more time and space for your relevant experiences. Technically, a well-written resume should already convey a sense of your intent and interest, which is what an objective and about are about. Check this out. Tell me what this person's objective is. I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Right, this candidate is interested in AR and immersive technologies and very likely looking for opportunities in those areas. How about this one? Three, Two, one, exactly, healthcare. You got the idea. Last one, don't use Google Doc to design your UX resume. Google Doc is nice. It automatically handles all the grammar checks, spell check for you. It even gives you templates. It's convenient, it's great, except designers are detail oriented. When you're so detail oriented to a point that you realize Google Doc or any of those templates will not give you a whole lot of control. How about I want the title just to be a little bit lower? How do I do that? Do I change the spacing of everything? You might be able to control more by spending more time learning Google Doc, but you already have the best tool on your computer, Adobe Illustrator, Sketch. You can put anything anywhere you want on the canvas. You have absolute control and a creative license on line spacing, margin, white space, kerning, tracking, you name it you can totally feel a sense of liberty making your resume in Sketch. If you need a resume in one hour for whatever reason, sure, use Google Doc and a Google Doc template. To me, resume is a design project. It's my design project. It's my product. I invest my time, my sweat, my effort to design my resume completely from scratch. And of course, it shows my design skills. I really don't want my design to be based off of somebody else's generic and mediocre template creation. I want to 100% own my design. All right, these are the six don'ts for UX resumes that I recommend for designers in 2021. The baseline is still making sure you include what you did, the impact of what you did, while making sure it's easy to read and parse under six seconds. Just before you go to bed tonight, check against these six things, change anything if needed. You will surprised to see the before and after. Speaking of surprise, I'm surprised and thrilled to see so many eager to learn designers and those who supported the channel. And of course, I need to give them a shout out. First up, thank you, Hoi Yan. Yeah, hope this is useful and hope my resume review is also useful for your next resume iteration. Thanks again, hashtag, thanks for another support. Great to hear from you. Thank you, Justine Nicole Borb. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Glad that you like the channel, that you like the content. I'm here to share my experience, my journey, practical design tips as much as I could. So hope it has been useful and inspirational in some way. If you like the design topics like these, feel free to stay tuned and there are way more videos ahead. Hope you enjoyed the bonus content from the last time and hope my feedback is useful for your next resume iteration. Speaking of bonus content, Here's another one for you. I'm more than happy to look over your resume and give you some feedback. All you have to do is one, smash the like button down below to help support me spending hours making this video. And two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video. And then you can send me your resume to my email, which you can find on my about page. Make sure to include your YouTube username so that I know you have left that comment and I will give you a shout out in my next video. Good luck to you all on your next UX resume iteration and future internships.
With that said, thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX videos like this, also consider smash that subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Choose.